All right, as you get more advanced in objective personality typing, you actually start typing with your partner, so you're not answering to yourself anymore, and you find that you're getting a different personality number than your partner in the other room more than half the time. What's going on? A large flare that we always chase and get people wrong on is the peacocking effect. All right, what's that? Think back to a kid who's insecure that he's too short, too dumb, too slow, can't ride the bike as fast as the other kids. What do they do? They peacock. No, I can do it. I'm awesome. I just don't want to do it right now. And all of us as humans, we have to appear valuable to the tribe or you get eliminated. That's the unconscious psychology deep down in there. So when you have insecurities, what do you do? Do you show them off to somebody you just met? No. You try and hide that and cover it up. Guess what everyone else is doing? Same thing. This is going to take you a long time to really get this. So the first time, the first hundred times you hear this, it's going to do nothing for you. But believe me, over time, it starts to sink in. Knowing this effect, once you are aware of that and you're looking for it, you'll see it. Here's the problem. You'll forget to look for it because you'll get wrapped into their bullshit. People are very convincing and you being a socially normal person are trying to relate to the person. So your unconscious is going, just go along with their bullshit so you can have report and vibe with the person. And now you're getting tricked by their bullshit because you're not consciously, objectively holding down that lever in your head going, wait, stop, don't fall for the bullshit. Don't let my biases go along with their biases. Don't fall for peacocking. It's really hard to resist that. It takes a lot of practice to resist that. All right, so the game goes like this. You get to know somebody and you get to know them based upon their actions. Not their words, their actions. What is their life about? Oh, this girl here, she's a cheerleader. All right, so she's spending the majority of her time playing the cheerleader game, the popularity game, new, new, new. This is where her actions are. This is where the majority of her hours are each week. Now, when you go talk to the cheerleader, what does she tell you? She starts to tell you about what she really cares about. Oh, what I really care about. And now she'll flip to her demons. Let's just say she's an ESFP, right? I know. Oh, I really care about the world. I really care about helping people. I really care about the future, right? This is what she's going to tell you. And you're looking at her like, uh, okay, right. Why don't you do any of that? Oh, because she's doing her savior. She's just SF at the top. So, but, so why does she care about NT and then she doesn't do it? Because it's her demons. Well, the demons, they make you frustrated, they make you mad when you have to use them. At late at night, when you sit there thinking, what else is there to life? What are you thinking about? Your demons. And then it's the same way the other way around with a nerd. What does he want to do? He wants to be popular. He wants to be well-liked. He wants to go to all the parties. Well, why doesn't he put in the work? Oh, because he's busy doing nerd stuff because it's tied to his saviors. So here's the point. When you roll up on a nerd, a jock, a popular person, and you say, hey, you're really good at this. They're like, yeah, 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 I know, I know. But then you say, hey, you suck at this. Then you point at their demons like, oh, no. No, I don't. I really care about that. And you're caught in a really awkward situation. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where unconsciously we know not to offend people by pointing out what they suck. You just go along when they're like, I'm really good at this. You're like, yeah, okay. Here's where this breaks down at scale. When we've been objectively typing people over the past several years, what we've consistently seen is that most people are totally peacocking on their demons. Now you slap a personality test in front of them, What the hell do you think they're going to do? They're going to run for the questions that talk about their demons and hit, I'm really good at this. They're expressing what they care about, what they want to be good at. They're not telling you what they actually put their damn time into. If you tell the nerd, hey, you're the smartest guy in school, he's like, yeah, I know. You tell the cheerleader, hey, you're the most popular girl in school, she's like, yeah, I know. People aren't running around super duper excited about their saviors because that comes easy for them. They're not even aware that they're good at it. People are fascinated with their demons. So we consistently see this all the time. Now listen to this. When we're typing people that are in the Myers-Briggs community, so they've already typed themselves, I'd say more than half get their type you know, wrong, obviously. And then of those that get their type wrong, there's a pattern of how they get it wrong. Say someone is, a, is, is literally an INFJ, the chances of them typing themselves as an EP are extremely high. I'm, I'm an IJ in real life, but I'm gonna, I see myself as an EP. The IP sees themselves as an EJ. The EP sees himself as an IJ. That is a big consistent pattern that we're seeing. When people type themselves wrong, we can almost predict what type they're going to type themselves as. So what can you do about this peacocking effect where people are seeing themselves on who they want to be, not who they actually are? What can you do? Nothing. The best thing you can do is be aware of it. Know that everyone's doing it all the time. Know that it's built into our evolutionary psychology so that we look valuable to the tribe. Know that you're doing it all the time. And you can see how much you're doing it by tracking how much other people are doing and then just assuming I'm doing the same amount. And then when you go to objectively type, you've got to have a spot for that on your checklist. So when we're typing something like, oh, that's FE. They have lead FE. Oh, they care about others. Like, wait, wait, okay. They have FE. Now you got to double check. Is that FE savior or FE demon? Because that may be an ESFJ or maybe an INTP. Because you have extremely introverted ESFJs and extremely extroverted INTPs. You track the savior and the demon. And you get used to, what is what are people like in a savior state? Oh, it's things come very natural to them. They're just assuming, like, yeah, I care about people. Just what I do. No big deal. 
Or it's, I care about people. It's the most amazing thing. Look how much I cared. It was so awesome. I'm a little kid. I tied my shoes. Can you believe it? Like, wow, yeah, you did your demons. I totally care about my demons. They got their eyes all wide. They're looking at you like, yeah, you believe this, right? You're like, uh, yeah, sure. So that whole state of people getting all weird and kind of amping up and peacocking, that's usually coming from the demon state. It's all stuff we all know everyone's doing. It's just becoming more conscious of this and being aware of this and then tracking this on your checklist.